Hey everyone, it's Professor Fiction once again, talking about Hunter x Hunter as, after a three year hiatus, it is effectively confirmed the series has returned, at least as of the time of recording. I thought, what better time to talk about Hunter x Hunter? Today, we're going to be talking about the chairman of the Hunter Association, the strongest Nen user on the planet, and that's a contentious statement, Isaac Netero. The generic, Big strong old man anime stereotype that gets all the hype. Kinda like Yamamoto, Hiruzen, Whitebeard, Master Roshi, and Silver Fang. However, for some reason I see people doubt the hype Togashi gives Netero and will take certain statements out of context to downplay him, even making stuff up just to downplay him. I've come to more or less answer all questions on the topic and hopefully can give a convincing answer as to where he should stand in comparison to the cast. As some people unironically think Netero was serious when he said he was around Morel and Nov's level. And while most tend to agree he's in that upper tier of the cast, I still thought I had some insight to spread on how truly powerful Isaac Netero is, as well as spread some insights on his character some people may not have realized. 60 years before the series even begins, long before Krolo, Hisoka, or even Xenozoldic, people most consider top tiers were even born, Netero had reached the upper limits of both his body and martial arts. He was grateful to the martial arts for making him who he was. At age 46, he secluded himself in the mountains, and to show his devotion to the martial arts, he would perform 10,000 punches each day. This seems to be a nod to a Bruce Lee quote, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks, but the man who practiced one kick 10,000 times. We'll get into how this training became important later. Initially, it took Netero a full day to do this before he'd fall asleep and begin again the next day, seemingly not eating and persisting solely off of aura. At the age of 50, however, he had evolved, and he could complete the 10,000 punches of gratitude in just an hour giving Netero more time to pray, likely training his 10, which increases durability. These years of training even garnered admiration from Meruem, stating he transcended limitation with effort alone. As he descended the mountain, Netero's punch brought tears to martial artists as it surpassed sound, and they handed over their dojo to him in exchange for making them his student. But this training in the name of gratitude did not humble Netero, rather it turned him into a monster. Netero began accepting challengers, but always remained disappointed, always searching for an opponent who could defeat him, a battle he could put his all into, yet nobody stood up to the standard he was searching for. Becoming Hunter Chairman and the Kung Fu Grand Master let him meet hundreds of potential rivals and he even underwent expeditions to the Dark Continent in search of his challenge, yet was only met with disappointment or boredom. That last part, about Netero's search for a worthy opponent, is one of the most critical parts of his character, yet everyone seems to overlook it and how important it is to his actual strength level. Even when Hisoka, which all the other Hunter examiners could recognize his power, openly challenged Netero during the exams, he was totally uninterested. Hisoka, the same guy who can brawl the strongest phantom troop member with prep and planning, and saw the association's top hunters as jokes. I may make a video on Hisoka in the future if this does well, by the way. Speaking of the Zodiacs, even though Netero used them as sparring partners, he still never mentions any of them as worthy, and he only even thought he could be challenged when the Chimera Ants appear. If anything, it's more impressive on Netero's side than the Zodiacs. This sort of goes into the next point that people will use to downplay Netero, and that's the claim he makes about only being around Morel and Nov's level. Not only does Nov clarify later that Netero underestimates himself, Netero often being a trickster character who will mess around with others, 
but it's stated that the Zodiacs are superior to Morel and Nov, at least in the case of Kanzai, which none of the Zodiacs seem to disagree with and just say that Morel has a desirable ability for the mission. Kanzai, while confident in his abilities, is stated to be weaker than Ginta by Hisoka, and immediately gets outsped and shut down by Ginta, Mizaistrom, and Sayu the moment he acts out of line. Yet all of these guys are just Netero's sparring partners? Even Jing Freaks, who Netero calls within the top 5 Nen users on the planet, with an insane talent to copy abilities just by getting hit by them, that's not even his net ability, he's, he's just so good, he could just do it just because, is only seen within that top 5 and just another sparring partner, not the strongest or a rival or anything like that. Some people seem to think that it's stated that Jing is stronger than Netero, when it's consistently stated he's only within the top 5 while Netero is at the absolute pinnacle. I also think that it's likely Netero spars with the Zodiacs in base, without using the Guanyin. Netero is a martial artist. Basically, the top in the series is the Grandmaster of Shigen Ryu Kung Fu. And we see him having many fights where he fights just using hand-to-hand -hand combat. When b Nolt challenges Bisky, a student of Netero's, they both specifically restricted their ability to use Nen and fought only as martial artists. On top of that, Netero implies he usually can't go all out to Meruem, and specifically brought them to a deserted location so they wouldn't need to hold back. Which is probably the Guanyin given the destruction it causes during the fight and it being referenced as his strongest move. So Netero is probably beating around these beyond Morel level Zodiacs with straight hands alone. Pretty metal. This is also supported by the numerous statements that Netero is the strongest in the Hunter world, which the data book describes three times, even stating at one point that it's undeniable that he's the strongest. Periston, when speaking to the other Zodiacs, refers to Netero as being too powerful, as well as Nov stating that if Netero can't beat P2, that no Hunter alive could stop P2 either. Not he, not Morel, and not the Zodiacs. Quick interjection, something I realized when editing, is the fact that Nov states this when just a few chapters prior, Morel makes the claim that there's no real way to know in advance who's going to win in a battle of Nen. Uh, he, he's fairly confident that strategy and abilities is a could lead to Nen battles being random or unpredictable. But Nov seems to state this very matter-of-fact-like, and Morel doesn't seem to disagree. Just something I thought was interesting, Morel might think that Netero transcends unpredictability and strategy, maybe. So... No, the Zodiacs don't actually scale to Netero, and he's not actually at Morel and Nov's level. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, another thing people tend to mention with Netero is his son, beyond Netero from the manga. This is less common, but for whatever reason, some people think he's some hypothetical prime body Netero that's just as strong as prime Netero. This really doesn't make any sense, as Beyond actually obeys Netero's commands. As when Netero ordered Beyond never go to the Dark Continent, Beyond complied until Netero died. It's also not even implied Beyond did the years of training or even brought his body to the limit like Netero did, as Netero's power was not talent, say like Gon or Killua, but sheer effort. Netero and the others wage a mini war of attrition against the Chimera Ants before Meruem is born, and during this time, Netero fights against armies of Chimera Ants, and we actually learn their formation and hierarchy. Each unit has one squadron leader, 4 to 5 officers, and 10 to 15 peons for each officer. After a while, the amount of ant squads goes down from at least 30 all the way down to 14. That's 16 squadron leaders and at least 64 officers. I mentioned this in a previous video, but remember, 
it was only a single squadron, Zazan squadron, that fought the Phantom Troop. It's implied by Jail and Ramont that the Chimera Ant hierarchy somewhat applies to power, with any squadron leader being able to one-shot a peon level ant. Given Zazan didn't really have any Nen training like Chi Tu or Leol, and her transformation may have just been a suppressed full power, it's very likely that each of the leader class ants are around her level. Unlike Phaeton, who gets his arms broken and can't even hurt Zazan, Netero solos 16 plus leaders and just says, oh, I'm getting my groove back. Even if you said that Zazan's transformation was a power-up, even her base state was relative to Phaeton in speed and could blatantly clash with him physically. I know Netero didn't fight all the ants at once, by the way, but it still speaks to his ability to no-diff over a dozen leaders on his own. Like, I get it, it sounds kinda crazy, but imagine Rusty Netero just strolls into Meteor City and just slaps Zazan and all the ants under her with no difficulty and just says, Hey, that was fun, can you send some more? Even officer class ants can make other troop members struggle and tank their normal attacks like a punch from the second physically strongest troop member, supposedly, or Bonolanov's spear. Speaking of the troop, remember everything I said about Krollo in my other video, which you should go check out if you haven't yet. Krollo, while blatantly superior, is rivaled by Xenozoldic at least in speed as well as Silva Zoldic who can one-shot Chi2 with training. Zeno is able to tag and wound Krollo and keeps him at bay when Krollo tries to trap him with Fun Fun Cloth. Yet, Zeno blatantly admits inferiority to Netero. In fact, when Netero and Zeno are sieging the royal palace, he too recognizes Netero as the true threat even after sensing Zeno's abilities, and is still surprised later when Netero pulls out the Guanyin Bodhisattva. This could actually mean that even without using the Guanyin, Netero is stronger than the strongest member of the Phantom Troop, and could give the hands to every single member, which again, is pretty consistent with him probably being able to beat up all the Zodiacs. This is actually supported again by the fact that Netero forced P2 and Meruem to compress their perception against him, also known as Spirit Echoes. Something Zeno explains only occurs in battles against truly powerful opponents. Zeno later states this had never happened to him before he had met Meruem. Not even against Krollo did he feel his time compress, and it coincidentally only happens in fights against the Royal Guard and the King Meruem. Never in other high tier fights like Krollo vs Hisoka, at least to our knowledge. Even Krollo's insane intellect and planning could be read by Zeno like a book but Zeno thinks it's impossible to predict Netero's next move. And keep in mind, this is all mostly in reference to a rusty and untrained and casual Netero. After getting his groove back against the Chimera Ants, Netero also dons his heart t-shirt, a sign that he's actually serious, and flexes an aura that even Morel is impressed by. So now we've established that the entire standard cast of the series is effectively below Netero. Even Illumi, who thinks he can murder Hisoka, thinks very highly of Netero. And basically all the top tier humans like Krollo and Hisoka have 4 out of 5 stats in the data book. Meanwhile Netero is the only human being to have 5s across the board. The next logical step is then to compare him to the Royal Guard. As I went over in my Phantom Troop vs the Royal Guard video, they are simply on another plane from the normal cast. Even the powerful Hisoka is inferior to newborn P2, who is stated to be the most formidable foe Gon and Killua have ever faced. As I explained earlier, Netero has this desire to fight a worthy opponent, someone beyond his abilities to defeat who is totally unstoppable. P2 is then presented as more powerful than Netero by Netero himself, but as Nob states, and as we already talked about in this scene, Netero is also being modest. This is also rusty Netero before he starts to train again. We find out again later from Colt after feeling a serious Netero's aura that he'd lose to any of the Royal Guard. 
all of which also having 5 out of 5 stats and being stated near equal each other in combat ability in the data books. Yet, even after hearing that, Netero becomes very interested in fighting Meruem. He doesn't even display interest in fighting P2 even after calling them stronger. And this is just a theory of mine, but Netero may have even stalled to allow for the birth of Meruem. As we learn later, despite all that has happened, risking the lives of his friends and the entirety of humanity, he's grateful that he ultimately got a chance to battle Meruem. Netero, much like Hisoka, is a character who likes to foster the growth of potential rivals, such as how he gave Gon, who he thought had more potential out of anyone at the Hunter exam, the most opportunities to fight and grow in the final test. It's possible after seeing how strong Pito was, Netero was interested in how strong Meruem could be. Eventually, Netero and Pito actually encounter each other, and Netero stands by as Pito comes to him. Much like how challengers would come to him in the past, as Netero says, When did I start waiting for my opponent to make the first move? In this exchange, we also see that while Netero couldn't really damage P2, he can move so quickly that even though P2 would activate a Terp Sakura, which they used to fight at full power, he launched an attack before P2 could attack him. P2 even had to compress their perception seemingly infinitely just to see Netero even moving, and his attack was so fast the narrator calls it unavoidable and blows Pito away. Netero then battles Meruem, in which he saw Meruem as the unstoppable opponent he wanted to face so badly. Another important narrative thing about this battle, unlike with any opponent prior, Pito included, Netero makes the first move against Meruem. This low-key kind of implies that even P2 was not seen as unstoppable in Netero's eyes, and wasn't even worth his time to begin with, otherwise he might have just rushed into fight as soon as he arrived in NGL. Meruem can barely follow Netero's moves, and admits Netero's prayer surpasses his own speed. Meruem is so powerful that a flicker of his true powers can shake Netero's resolve, yet Netero is almost confident he could win the battle of attrition against Meruem, and is surprised by how little damage Zero Hand did. Basically imagine that Netero's Guan Yin in his head is below a flicker of Meruem's powers, yet he's still somewhat confident that Zero Hand could destroy or significantly damage him. So just imagine how much stronger Zero Hand is compared to Netero himself. The Zero Hand also leaves actual wounds on Meruem, while thousands of his Guan Yin strikes can't even scratch him. Meruem used his supernatural foresight from playing with Komugi to read Netero's moves, which he describes as being infinite in combinations as he reads through thousands of attacks, which none of the royals have shown the ability to do so. Meruem even sees Netero's own intelligence as rivaling his own. This doesn't even go into how Netero scales to his underlings, who actually fought the guard, in which Morel's smoky jail is actually so strong that neither Yupi nor Poof can break it, and he can almost have a mental brawl with Poof. Yet Netero can basically pull a Joseph Joestar. What you'll next say is, Here is the very next thing that will come out of your mouth. Don't you dare dishonor our battle here, Jojo. Don't you dare dishonor our battle here, Jojo. Even with his ability to basically read minds, Netero technically read Morel's actions even better than Poof did. Now, P2 is probably stronger than Netero in a physical sense, probably being more durable and having more raw aura. However, Netero himself doesn't seem to find those attributes enough to be above him, and with his vastly superior speed and intelligence, as well as basically top-tier skill and net abilities, could eventually take down P2 even if it's a drawn-out attrition match like with Meruem. Even if we say it's contentious, the fact that Netero's able to blitz P2 and Meruem in this manner is insane, as P2, even newborn, is stated to be the strongest opponent Gon and Kill will have faced. P2 was also stated capable of chopping Gon's head off and soloing a team of Gon, Kill, Knuckle, Palm, and Ikalgo, which really bolsters that speed scaling. 
If anything, however, I think it's very likely that Netero would beat Pichu given his speed, intelligence, and the narrative implications from Togashi that Pichu was never the opponent Netero wanted to face. There's also a reason Netero is the only human character to have stats rivaling the royals in the data books, and the only character at all to have maxed out stats aside from Merwin. At the end of the battle, Netero unleashes his zero hand. After charging it up for days, an attack Merwin calls Brilliant, more praise than he's given any opponent aside from Komugi. It produced an aura so scary, Killua sensed it from several miles and ran away. Even Pitu's N was only around 2 kilometers, with several usually meaning more than 2, and miles being longer than kilometers. This could mean that Netero has an N range that surpasses Pitu's. That or the malice in his Nen was just so scary and powerful that Killua could sense it from so far. It's a little hard to tell, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. If this was true, it would be pretty insane. As Morel and Nob were hyping up P2's end range for just being 2 kilometers, and top tier Nen users like Zeno Zoldic act like a few hundred meters is impressive. Maybe Zeno wasn't joking when he said Netero always beats him. Even after Netero loses and can hardly damage Meruem, Meruem has nothing but unreserved respect and admiration for Netero which is pretty impressive coming from the guy who stands at the top of all life. Even Meruem's stats are off the board completely, beyond any character or royal guard. In the end, he got to live out the ultimate battle against an unstoppable opponent like he always wanted. While I'm no deep narrative analysis YouTube channel, there are many channels who do it better, I've noticed many people don't fully understand Netero's sacrifice in his final moments and wanted to explain it in more depth to those who are interested. Netero spent well over 100 years dedicated to himself and the martial arts, literally spending a decade just showing his gratitude and thanks for making him what he was. He has great pride in his individual strength and highly values those who are also strong, so much so he doesn't care about who has to die along the way. Despite his efforts, experience, skill, and devotion, nothing Netero can do can stop Meruem, with Meruem explaining that no matter what, Meruem would have eventually defeated Netero. This weak old animal who bypassed the decades of effort Netero forced himself through. This is to show that sheer effort alone, the effort of the individual, can never be enough to stop the ants which is shown again later when Gon is forced to make a contract worse than death just to surpass P2. Netero in turn responds with not his own strength, but the strength of humanity's own malice and evil, represented by the Rose Bomb, a nuke which devastated cities and killed thousands. Netero disregarded the power of love, represented through the heart shirt he wears in the final battle, by literally stopping his own heart and using the strength of hatred. While Netero's strength brought about admiration, the Rose Bomb only brings about fear. This power of malice, however, was ultimately then countered by Poof and Yuppie's own love for the king, even if only temporarily. The Rose Bomb also carries a poison, to kill those who survive the explosion that spreads extremely quickly. This is to say that the hatred of humanity is unrelenting, and will never stop and will pursue you far beyond its own reach. This fight is basically Netero forsaking his own ideals, which stopped him from attacking the off-guard Meruem out of respect just minutes before this, and submitting to humanity's malice which surpasses that of even the ants, in order to save humanity. That is to say, while Netero saw Meruem as a bug, he respected humanity, because the malice of humanity was stronger than any force in the world. Anyway, that's all we can say about Netero, my favorite character despite the limited screen time. His interactions with Meruem are easily my favorite parts of the series. 
If you're excited to see Hunter x Hunter return, please like and subscribe so that I know to make more content like this. Like I said earlier, I'm considering a Hisoka video, and I'm also thinking about maybe making a Karapika and Killua video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.